don't try to restart all aspects of your life at once. Take it one step at a time, because these are gonna be very overwhelming things. There's gonna be a lot to learn. So don't try to restart all aspects of your life at once. Just do it bit, bit by bit. Welcome to the Psych Show Office Hours. I'm psychologist Dr. Ali Matu, and every week I connect with all of you, the psyche, on Discord, answer your questions live, talk about whatever you want to talk about. All right, so that was our intro, and let's see. Okay, Bluebird's got a question. What suggestions do you have for folks going back to school or work after a year of isolation quarantine? I expect it will be dif uh, different and how to deal with the adjustment. Bluebird, this is an amazing question. And it's an amazing question because I think it's so applicable to a lot of different people. Many of us have gotten used to a way of life that involves staying at home, distancing ourselves from other people, um, trying to manage the the rightfully so anxiety of living in a pandemic where, where close proximity to other people and crowded situations as well as indoor situations is associated with danger. Now, what we know is this is a highly unpredictable situation. This advice, take it, um, take it with that contextual uh, warning that it really depends on where in the world you're living. But let's imagine that you are in part of the world where there isn't a high risk of a, a coronavirus outbreak and also um, more parts of work and school are beginning to open up. And let's also assume that the work and school is opening up in a responsible way that is reducing risk and it's mitigating risk. So the first thing I wanna say is there's always some risk involved in these social situations. Let's take the flu for example. The flu is something that's been around for many, many decades and we've come to accept it as part of the risk of, of living in a society. So one thing I want you to remember is there's absolutely no way to completely reduce the risk of living. And as we start to open society back up in a responsible, reasonable way, there's always going to be some risk. Uh, this is what I talk to people as the, the risk of living. It's the risk of crossing the street, of driving your car, of flying in an airplane, of eating pretzels. <laughs> like there's, there's a risk to life and there's no way to absolutely completely reduce risk. What we have to do is manage that risk as, as best as we can. So that's the first thing I want you to do is just, um, is, is coming to terms with that idea that um, there's always gonna be some risk to living life. Now, the second thing to do is this idea of behavioral independence. What I mean by that is practicing being able to do things on your own, specifically getting from A to B, getting from where you are to where you need to go and then coming back again. The world has changed. Going to get groceries is different now. Air travel is different now. School is different now. And it's likely going to continue to change as this pandemic continues to evolve and hopefully change in positive ways. So this is why I bring up behavioral independence is we're not just returning to old routines. We're going through, we have to learn new routines. And so I want you as a second goal here is to start practicing what you have to do to get from where you are to where you need to go and then back again. The systems, the routines, the routes, the procedures, all of that kind of stuff has changed. So if you are starting school uh, two weeks from now, I want you to actually start practicing what it takes for you to get to school and then come back. I want you to learn about what the procedures are to get into school, what it's going to be like 
to be there in that environment and then what it's going to be like to come back home. My daughter has been um, going to school since uh, July, but when it started again, I was so anxious, so nervous. The first day after I dropped her off, I was, I was crying in the car. I felt like I was sending my daughter off to war. And the very first few days, the hardest part for me was just how different it was, how quiet it was because they couldn't have all the different classes outside for recess at the same time. It was only one class at a time. How much more subdued that made everything, how there were temperature checks, how there was mandatory hand washing, there was social distancing in place. It was really overwhelming for me to take in all the new procedures. So as much as you can, practice the new routines and remember these new routines are gonna be very different than the old routines that you were used to. The third thing I want you to think about as you're beginning to enter the world again is, um, is learning um, how to manage some of the difficult emotions that are gonna come up. So we know for young kids in, in elementary school, it's actually normal and expected for them to have a fear of germs and for them to be concerned about hand washing and getting sick. So we know that young kids, six, seven, eight, they're, they're already vulnerable to that and they're gonna have a hard time with that. Um, and we know that uh, for teenagers, um, social connection is so important and teenagers are so worried about social um, rejection. And for you all, if you're a teenager going back to school, there's this desire to reconnect with your friends and there's also gonna be limitations in place about how to do that. And if you're an adult, you probably, if you're in your 20s or you're in college, there is this tension between all the normal expected challenges of being a college student, of being a young adult, about trying to launch your, your career and navigate all this stuff. And all of that's gonna be more, made more complicated by social distancing at work and classrooms and all that sort of stuff. So this is a long way of me saying, really intense emotions are gonna come up. Like the first time I dropped off my daughter at school and I was just crying and crying and crying in that car. Powerful emotions are gonna come up as you are adjusting back to school. So we should really plan for that and think about what you need to do to help yourself to get through. Maybe those first few days, that first week, the first few weeks, maybe go easy on yourself. Maybe don't schedule too much other stuff. Maybe really giving yourself permission to watch a lot of your favorite TV shows or to um, maybe buy a new video game and so you have that to look forward to as a way of giving yourself some space and time to cope. Um, really go easy on yourself and, and, and learn um, what you can do to manage some of the powerful emotions that are gonna come up with that. And the last thing I want you to say, I think I'm on number four that is absolutely critical, is learning how to ask for help when you need it and learning how to check in with the people you're close to, your coworkers, your friends at school. Um, this is gonna be a really challenging time. There's a lot of unexpected things that are gonna happen with emotions and routines and, and all this sort of stuff. So this is not a time that we can go through this stuff alone. What we have to do is become very comfortable with that idea that no one can navigate the reopening of a world after a pandemic by themselves. That we really need our friends, we really need our family to help us through this. Just like when I was crying in the car after I dropped off my daughter, I needed to text my friends. I needed, um, you'd think I would say like, I needed to talk to my wife about it, but my wife was going through the similar emotions. So I actually, what really helped me was talking to two of my best friends who don't have kids and really venting to them about all the stuff that was going on in my head because they didn't have kids themselves it was less of an emotional thing for them and they were able to provide me with a lot of support and a lot of guidance. So get good at asking for help and check in on the people that you are close to when they might be going through a tough time. It's really hard to tell with the mask 
what emotions people are experiencing. So check in with your coworkers, check in with your friends, check in with your family as they begin to readjust to different aspects of life. There's this wonderful campaign that was put together by the Ad Council and the Jed Foundation called Seize the Awkward. And what it means is seizing those awkward moments of conversation of, hey, are you okay? Like, you seem to be a little off. I just want to check in. Are you, are you okay? And I want all of us to become very comfortable with those awkward conversations and really seizing those awkward opportunities to check in with one another because we, we need each other's support. We need each other's help here. And the last thing I'll say, this is sort of tying into the very beginning, is um, um, do it bit by bit if you can. As you're working on that behavioral independence, take it one step at a time, one day practice going there, another day check in about what the routines are gonna be, the next time do part of it, part of the whole experience yourself, but maybe not stay for the whole day. Don't try to restart all aspects of your life at once. It's gonna be overwhelming, it's gonna be really difficult, it's a lot, so take it bit by bit. If you want your question answered live, join our Discord community every Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific. I have a conversation with you on Discord, so if you'd like to check that out, check out the link uh, in the doobly-doo description below. If you want to watch more Office Hour episodes, check out this playlist that's popping up right over here. And if you want more videos that celebrate mental health and make psychology fun and easy to understand, be sure to subscribe to The Psych Show.